This is video number three of the lower procedure number one, part of the tutorials concerning lower procedure and its application. You must have watched two videos previously, part one and part two. Part one was about the introduction to the lower methodology. Part two was about the forms that are used in the LOVRA methodology and also the importance of recording your geographic location. And we have news for you. These part one and part two videos have been recently updated. Part one, for example, is now available in Portuguese. Part two has also been uh, slightly updated. And finally, we have a new video, a tutorial by Professor uh, Tomás Dentinho. Uh, specifically about the Q method. Part three video is going to cover the Q method and some of the preparations that are needed uh, when you're applying the Q method. In particular, cherry picking, the need for data to be anonymous and for the interview process to be conducted in a, a private setting. Cherry picking. You must have heard of cherry picking. You must have been instructed to apply cherry picking in the interview process for the Q method. But what does this mean? In English, cherry picking, it's when you're selective. You can be selective about your food, about your boyfriend or girlfriend. You can be selective about the clothes that you wear. Cherry picking is when you have, for example, let's say a cherry tree full of uh, red cherries and there's a cherry that is blue. So you're actually more bound to select that blue cherry because it is different from the other ones. In Portuguese we say selecionar a dedo. Cherry picking as part of the Q method is a strategy that is designed uh, to provide sufficient variation in the data. Variation meaning diversity. It is different from other methods where you're instructed as a surveyor to pick the respondents at random. It's the exact opposite of being random. You're actually being specific and deliberate. And in the Q method, it ensures the, it ensures the solidity of the data uh, uh, because the idea is neither to get an average of attitudes that people have with respect to hazards, uh, which uh, would be a representative survey, nor consensus, as it is in the case of a, a COVACA, where you have focus group uh, interviews and you're heading towards consensus. So it's a very different approach. The purpose is to include people affected by hazards who are often marginalized and vulnerable in, in order to have inclusion and diversity you need to specifically pick some outliers within a community. And that's what we're going to talk about. If you have a community of people um, and you want to apply the cherry picking, um, sometimes it can be very confusing. And you look at people, uh, and this is very normal for everyone, you make up a stereotype of who they are based on the way they dress, the way they move, based on their age, their body shape, based on a number of visible characteristics, but it's very difficult to apply cherry picking. Some people really want to be picked and they are advertising that. Some people don't want to be picked. And you know as a surveyor that you need to have diversity in your data set and that you need to have inclusion in your data set, but you're not selecting people at random. So how to do that? And obviously, if there are people who are saying, please don't pick me, you're not going to pick this person because this person is not going to be willing to do the interview with you. And it, it really takes one hour and a lot of patience to apply the Q method. There's also some, uh, perhaps some limitations. So why not pick someone who may be blind? Because you need the person to relate to content that is written. And if there are some limitations, you need to assess whether uh, these limitations uh, are actually going to represent a limitation in the Q method itself, in the application of the Q method. But otherwise, 
any of these people based on their profiles could be cherry picked. It's just that you need to eventually be selective. You need to consider a few things. Well, you're going to cover two sukus per week. And the Q method, the guidance that we're providing to you, requires you to select a minimum two interviewees per suku, ideally three people for the Q method. Uh, so ideally, you're going to end up with six people every week being uh, interviewed, applying the Q method. And we could have a few uh, very basic uh, criteria that would tell you um, what to select and what not to select. If people are rich or poor, if they're young or old, these are opposites, if they are men or, or a woman. Already with these combinations, you'll have eight possible uh, combinations. Uh, of uh, rich and poor, young and old, men and women. And ideally, you want six people. Now, obviously, there are other criteria to be considered as well, uh, as you have seen in the previous picture with all the uh, different people. Uh, but, you know, let's say that you have six uh, Q method interviews and you're going to select a combination of rich and poor, young and old, men and women. How can you ensure that you have sufficient variation and you're actually peeping, picking up people who have vulnerability and who would otherwise not be selected? In a typical uh, selection year, you could end up with selecting a middle-aged um, average person, man or woman, it doesn't really matter. But as long as your total data set is sufficiently varied, has sufficient diversity, then we'll be happy. But you must not force people to be interviewed through the queue. Sometimes uh, it's very easy to see who is the outlier. If you see uh, a community of people and there's always somebody who stands out. Uh, and perhaps this little icon here shows exactly what an outlier is. Um, but it's really up to your instincts and your experience as a surveyor to find out. Outliers are generally the people who do not match the typical profile, the typical stereotype. And those who tend to deviate from the norm in their perceptions and reactions. These outliers can thereby constitute a specific stereotype within the group. And these are the ones that you actually want to select. The data analysis will then point out to vulnerabilities that would otherwise remain unseen. And this is exactly what we want out of the Q method. Together with the Kovaka method um, uh, as part of the LOVA. So what is your role as a surveyor? The Q method includes individual interviews with a few selected people. It lasts approximately one hour and you are instructed to reserve one hour for the Q method interview, because otherwise you won't cover all the questions and it's absolutely necessary to cover all questions. So you need to really time your time in the suku on day two very carefully. Uh, in order to avoid biases in the interview process, privacy is very important. Surveyors will be asking the interviewee to look at pictures and put them in order of preference. This is also a way of collecting data on people's preferences and perceptions of hazards, risks, and reactions. And although the surveyors will be asking the interviewee a lot of detail on their own livelihoods through the Q method form, this information must remain anonymous. You're not supposed to ask the person's name. And anonymity also goes into the issue of pictures. Taking picture, you could already be revealing uh, the person's uh, private data in different ways. So this is clearly explained in the request for consent. And this request for consent must be read in full before you start the interview process. Now, privacy and anonymity. Beyond the issue of the Q method interview being anonymous, uh, the application of the Q form also requires privacy. And I'm stressing this because it is very important. Q surveys have been designed to be one-on-one -on -one meetings, face-to-face -face with your interviewee with sufficient privacy. It requires uh, 
you know, a good degree of privacy. This is because there can be unwanted interference from, for example, family members, curious neighbors and bystanders, government people and others. Those people can be perceived by the person being interviewed as being people of authority. Unwanted interference, especially from people of authority, can lead to bias in the Q method, and this must be avoided. Surveyors can ask people who can potentially interfere with a Q survey application to leave the room when you're conducting the interview. And you must also protect the person's privacy and anonymity. Only take pictures if you are requested to and only if allowed. Remember, some interviewees may feel intimidated. They may feel shy, reluctant, suspicious to provide an honest response to certain questions in the Q method, especially when there are people standing by, the bystanders, people who are uh, looking at them while they're doing the interview, even if they're only curious observers. So be very attentive to that. Q form question number four, for example, asks people what measures the interviewees expect from the authorities when assets are destroyed by natural hazards. Now assume if there are people from the government, government officials present and watching this interview process, they represent a person of authority observing the interview process, then there's a reasonable chance that this answer will be biased if there's a person of authority just looking at the interview process. Therefore, ensuring that the Q survey interviews are actually one-on-one -on -one conversation, a one-on-one -on -one conversation between the surveyor and the interviewee without interference is very important. Be aware that as a surveyor, you can always be seen as a person of authority yourself. Try to break down this perception. If you uh, note that there can be any misunderstandings about what your role is, you can read the consent form again and state your role as a neutral surveyor. Also, as a HIVA surveyor trained in COVACA and Q method, you're expected to show a high degree of ethical standards. The need for privacy when applying the Q method must not be understood as a free pass for intimacy under no circumstances. HIVA's EBD Global Optimum and Antea Belgium will not tolerate any form of harassment from surveyors, including sexual harassment, as part of the application of the LOVER survey in the field in Timor-Leste. Very important to remember that. Now, a quick checklist for the Q method. First, all the subjects being interviewed, all the people being interviewed must be willing. They have to provide consent. This consent is, is called the FPIC, free prior informed consent. And this goes for all the interviews. All the interviews uh, must be kept uh, private and anonymous without the presence of persons of authority, uh, picking uh, or without the consent. Anonymity must also be ensured. Third, enough Q method interviews per circle. Our guidance is minimum two interviews, preferably three interviews per circle, maximum four. And we say maximum four because we don't believe that there's time enough to conduct more. But if you feel that you can conduct more than five, go ahead. Enough diversity in your data set. That means apply the cherry picking guidance and think about what parameters would determine vulnerability. Obviously, people of age, people who are poor, people who have disabilities, these are determinants of vulnerability. You want to cherry pick them, but you also want to ensure diversity in your data set. Remember that. Finally, uh, two more points. Enough time for all interviews. We cannot have incomplete Q forms. If we if we do get incomplete Q forms, uh, the entire Q method interview will be invalidated. Uh, we'll not be able to use uh, the Q method interview 
if it is incomplete. And it's very important that you complete all the questions. Uh, and geolocation as well. You must record the location of the Q method interview, where the person lives. There are features of the house and features of the person being interviewed that are being asked in this form. You must complete all of them. Your capacity to observe and take notes adequately through the form and on spot are very important. The next tutorial video is video number four. And we say thank you very much. Muito obrigado. The government of Timor-Leste is implementing, with the support of the United Nations Development Program and funding from the Green Climate Fund, a project titled Safeguarding Rural Communities and the Fiscal Assets from Climate-Induced Disasters in Timor-Leste. This video and related materials are funded by the project. Government entities involved in the project include the Secretariat of State of Environment and the, the Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs as the implementing partner, along with the following entities as responsible parties, Ministry of State Administration, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Ministry of Public Works and the Secretariat of State of Civil Protection, companies Antea Belgium, part of the Antea Group, EBD Global Optimum of Rio de Janeiro and the NGO Hivos at timor -Lashi are the joint venture of service providers for the assignment titled Comprehensive Climate Hazard Mapping and Risk Assessment and Development of a Risk Model for timor -Lashi under the mentioned project.